So I'm going to read something in particular. And then I'm going to state something kind of related. Uh, so for the last year, the Kiwi Farms has been getting deplatformed from many, many hosts. And I've believed that the source of this problem has been a specific group uh, led by a specific individual. However, the threats that keep us off the internet are hard to get proof of because the providers do not want to speak with me. They do not want to help me in any way. Um, they want just they just want me gone, and they don't want to assist in my endeavors to stay on the internet. So it's very hard for me to get any kind of evidence as to what's happening. And for the last year, um, I've been struggling with the thought of risking it going into discovery with a lawsuit and proving this. Um, however, now something has happened and I feel like I feel a little bit more confident in something because uh, this post came out. Um, when I read the Washington Post article, there were a couple of statements that were like, oh, this is new information to me. This is information that I would not be able to prove independently. Um, without an admission. And then following this article with this admission, uh, Liz Fung Jones has autonomously decided to go to LinkedIn of his own free will and make the following statement. He says, Catherine L. and I invited Natisha Tiku, N Natasha Tiku, who is the author of the Washington Post article, and says, to see the world that our multidisciplinary all volunteer team has been doing over the past year as Kiwi Farms was deplatformed for from over 32 providers located in 22 countries that found it in violation of their AUP. By our count, we set in motion more than 24 of those terminations with our abuse reports and our professional follow-ups that ensure that they were actioned. Because of needing to repeatedly find and change new providers, the site achieved approximately 50 to 60% reliability as observed from U.S. consumer ISPs over the last year, as opposed to the 99.5% or higher reliability a typically law-abiding website with competent administration will offer. Hmm. Thousands of hours of thankless work, he continues, went into taking the single site offline. Even then, hopping to a new shithouse provider takes merely hours of work. And then following up with the to show the new provider is in cahoots with the abuse and unresponsive to complaints can take dozens or hundreds of hours and weeks and months of wall time. This is not repeatable, nor should it have ever to be repeated. There is no slippery slope here, least of all because the vast majority of the sites on the internet comply with their upstream AUPs. Um, so I would never have been able to prove that there was a conspiracy of specific named individuals, uh, uh, intentionally disrupting my businesses and my personal revenue and my personal, uh, activities and, and my sites. Um, if not for the post that you see in front of me and also the Wall Street Journal post. And as such, chat, um, I am looking for representation in the state of California um, who would not, and I'll just leave it at that. I'm looking for a lawyer who is on the bar in California who is experienced in general business li litigation, particularly those who are competent with tech issues and also um, is interested in general freedom of speech causes uh, on a personal level is interested. I've already received a bunch of uh, nominations for this. I've not received any direct offers. So right now it's just kind of like a cold, cold calling thing. And uh, if you have a recommendation and it's not Robert Barnes, not, no offense to Robert Barnes. It's just, it's been suggested a thousand times at this point. Um, feel free to email me. Or uh, there's a thread on the Kiwi Farms where you can make a post. 
and uh, I'm just doing cold calling right now. I have already have a lawyer who's assisting me with this, um, but is not licensed in California. It may be a combination of federal and civil litigation. Um, but we're evaluating our options, and if you know somebody who fits the bill, or if you are somebody who fits the bill, uh, let me know. Um, and just be aware that I might be doing a Montograph GoFundMe in the near future. <laughs> so, um, with that said, I would like to thank everybody who uh, still is subscribed to The Gum Road. You can find The Gum Road at netofthearnet.com, netofthearnet.com, uh, if you would like to support the podcast, of course. And all the people who do super chats, because while everything remains so tumultuous and Bitcoin income is sort of like on and off, depending on what's happening that month, um, my needs are mostly being taken care of uh, thanks to the the gum road and stuff. I appreciate it. So that's the Liz Song Jones update. I'm trying to be um, as unopinionated about this as I possibly can be, uh, which is not typical of me. The new Josh face reveal, dude, uh, that's part of the reason why I'm saying I need to get, uh, I need to continue losing weight and start my, start dieting again, because now I'm thinking like, God, I'm going to have to go to fucking court. <laughs> I'm going to have to go, I'm going to have to stand in front of the Supreme Court. And you know what they say, if you're fat, the, the, the people are less sympathetic to you. If I was a nice, handsome young man uh, who wasn't fat, I'm more likely to win my case. It's true. It's how people are, chat. It's just how they are. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.